Crossing the Atlantic Ocean using manpower alone is one of the greatest challenges. Despite never having rowed seriously before, RAF Regiment officers Matt Stowers and Mark Jacklin believe fitness alone will carry them through. They've been taking part in the Woodville Atlantic rowing race along with 15 other boats. The favourites for the race are the Kiwis from New Zealand who've done it before and are confident of breaking the record of 41 days from the Canaries to Barbados. But Matt and Mark think they can keep up with the experts. It's going to be a long time of sea with just a pair of us, so there's always that sense of apprehension going into the unknown. But now we're fully prepared and now it's just let's get on with the race. Matt and I haven't rowed before um, until we took on this adventure, so just to make it a little bit more tricky for ourselves, we chose something which we haven't done before. There's several aspects to that, obviously the sleep deprivation, which is one of the hardest things in this event, and how you recover from that. I know for many months I was wanting to go to sleep during the day, <laughs> every two hours, and, uh, and sort of waking up at night occasionally, ready for my next shift, you know. With 3,000 nautical miles before them, the pair are full of optimism as they set off from Tenerife. But their limits of physical and mental endurance will be tested to the full as the ocean batters their 24-foot rowing boat with unpredictable and at times atrocious weather. Before I take over from Mark briefly, this is what we're battling at the moment. And look at the big fella. This is what it's all about. Knows why I'm about to go out and join in. On day one of the Woodville Transatlantic Race, a pod of dolphins follows in the wake of their ship Per Ardua. The boat is named after the RAF motto, meaning through hardship to the stars. Look at them all. Bloody hell. Come on, get the toe. But although the dolphins bring hope, the hardship is just beginning. Well, it's day one. Uh, we've just done 20, coming up now to our 23 and a half hours. It's been a hard graft. Last night was interesting. It's a long time. It's a long night. And uh, both Mark and I are somewhat suffering a bit. We've got to get into a routine. Not eating a lot of food at the moment. Uh, and our hands are getting quite sore and blistered. Mark is currently just sat there rowing. The weather is actually quite good although we have a swell going left to right and it's not the direction we want it to go and there's a bit of a wind as the weather deteriorates 30 foot swells and a force 10 gale make it impossible to make any headway right we are now both battened in we're not going anywhere and as you can probably see from the front of the boat, we ain't having a lot of fun. All romantic notions of surfing the waves towards Barbados at speed are gone as the rowers throw out a drag anchor and batten down the hatches to ride out the storm. Uh, well, today's been a fun those days. Um, couldn't row this morning, we had to put the sea anchor out. We rowed a bit this afternoon, that was interesting. And this again, another four, so it's about ten is outside, bashes around, we're on the parachute and um, we're just being rocked constantly. Yeah, and hopefully you'll be able to pick up some of the noises. And movement, the movement is superb. We're getting bounced all over the shop. And guess what? I'll show you what it's like outside. <laughs> dark. <laughs> you'll probably just see the light. You can't see that, it means it's dark, because it's dark. Apart from the high winds and heavy swell in the Atlantic, there are other hazards on the horizon. A large emergency vessel, this is a strobo car driver. The size of that thing. A huge tanker two kilometers away could be on top of the tiny rowing boat in a matter of minutes, but it ignores their urgent radio calls. Try to raise a large merchant vessel. Large merchant vessel. Come on, talk to us, please. Finally, to the relief of the crew, they do make contact. What's your course and what's your destination? 
Our destination is Barbados. Barbados, okay. And how many uh, members on board? There are two people on board. What can I do? Nothing, just trying to make sure when we see vessels that we can actually raise them and that they know that we're about because we are a very small vessel. Yeah, okay, please stand by, just check uh, the radar and I'll give a call. Just please stand by one zero. This is going to let other boats down the area. Oh, that's very kind of. Matt and Mark have to row naked much of the time to avoid getting pressure sores. But being at the oars for two hours on and two hours off takes its toll. Matt develops a huge infection in his groin and can't move. Mark has to do double shifts to compensate. It's like pushing paint dry, isn't it? Well, you imagine doing it for 12 hours a day. <laughs> Last night I was in absolute tatters. Caps off to Mark though. Uh, can't knock it. He took it on, ended up doing three hours about, or three hours rowing, hour and a half off all through the night and this morning. Uh, it was outstanding. It hasn't been that good really. Well, Matt's been unwell for the last couple of days. Man down! Man down! Um, and he's bravely tried to soldier on, and then at certain times of the day, unfortunately, um, he's either, or well, something's happened out here, he won't tell me exactly what's happened, but. I can imagine he's passed out or something, has clambered into the cabin and um, is unable to hardly move, let alone do anything. And he's a stubborn <laughs> and decides to come back out here again at some point and then he goes down, man down again. Uh, I have sores upon sores and sores where I shouldn't have sores. My hands are in tatters, my joints are wrecked. So all in all we're feeling tip top at the moment. Just a quick look through the window. As you can see, we're banging around all over the place. So, bonus. So, that's it from me. When they set out, the rowers imagined they would spend at the most 50 days at sea. But now, with Christmas looming, it's becoming obvious that target was hugely optimistic and tensions are rising among the crew. Best of it say going on the Atlantic. Not very pleasant. It's grim. But if you want to do it, crack on. But there's no way I'm gonna to say to anyone, yeah, go and do it. It's the best thing. Yeah. It's just another bloody painful day, you know, not going anywhere. It's just same thing, bloody awful. The only problem being now is that um, the waves behind us we can't keep the rear hatch open, so we've got we're sweating in here now, so more no ventilation. And as you can hear when you're really resting, you can hear that drone of the water maker. So um, it's quite a bit of purgatory in this um, cabin now. It's not such the sanctuary that it used to be. More um, navigation light. Oh, more books. The rowers' families have stowed away a halfway box to lift morale, filled with small gifts from home. These boxes are the first physical contact the men have had with their families for over a month and a half. Uh, some jerky, which will pass away some uh, hours and long hours of the night. I'm chewing on that, um, chewing some stags. What else have we got? Ah, my favourite, which is a, uh, open it. It's a little picture of um, a lad guy. And, um, Let's see. Let's play. Wake up, Daddy. Wake up, Daddy, it says. So, um, that's, that's a corker, so not only can you wake me up at home early, you can wake me up here early. The presence of sharks makes washing in the ocean a dangerous business. A quick splash is the order of the day. In he goes. Wait, there's stuff down there. Whoa. I don't know how deep it is. Hey! There's mattress towers in the Atlantic having a walk. Progress is painfully slow and the weather continues to be unkind to the RAF team. I've never felt so physically and mentally down in my life. 
uh, bad day all seven down, bad night, night last night. Uh, you alright, Mark? Yeah, I'm fine, mate. It's just a massive wave hitting us. I don't know how much that came across on camera. I'm absolutely drained. <sighs> I'm just glad I'm in half life. Um, there's not a lot left. We've got a long way to go, and I'm just now physically fine. Mentally, I'm just in tatters. It's another low point. They're only halfway across the ocean. But they get news that some of the other teams are almost finished. I just don't understand how we can work as hard as we do day in, day out, and still seem to get nowhere fast like the other teams. It's just one of those bizarre things because I can't believe. Well, good luck to them. They're obviously working hard out there, and it's something that we should look at and say, bloody hell, maybe they've done something we haven't. Matt and Mark decided to go further north than the other boats in the race. It would have cut off a large slice of the crossing and given them an edge. But their inexperience has taken its toll. While the other racers enjoy good trade winds and currents, Matt and Mark are left exhausted and fighting a losing battle, which they know will get much worse before it gets better.